Ben, we're looking here at a fence. There's a lot of strands of wire here. Um, you're part of a larger estate here, I suppose. Some yes. of the land is, you're, you're involved with is uh, it's part of a larger estate. And this is some, there's a project going on here. So when, when we took the farm on, he, he requested that he'd like to take a proportion out into environmental schemes. And this was one of those fields, it's about five hectares. It was a very heavy, wet field actually, so it, it needed a lot of work on drainage, so it was ideal to take out. It had a high number of different species of grass in it. Um, and so he's, I think, is it eight stranded? And it's to stop any badgers and foxes getting in to, to allow, I think, predominantly curlew to nest in here, an endangered ground nesting bird. Um, and we might graze it in the late summer at his request with, with, with young stock. Yeah. Yeah. It's just all about working with other people and meeting their needs. Yeah, and it's part. Look, it's part of the reality too. It's just, this whole journey and sustainability, I guess, too, and biodiversity. It's yeah. We're going to see more of it of sorts anywhere. Exactly. Aren't we? I can't claim direct credit for this, but it's, it's yeah. it is part of the farm, and it's, it's it is nice to have stuff like this on the, yeah. on the farm. Yeah. Yeah. So will this be bailed for hay typically then in maybe some, August or? Uh, yeah, it, it, that's sort of his choice really. Some, yeah. some years he does and mm. some, some years he doesn't. Mm. Some years we've had bought the bales off him. Other years he's used it on a, another farm on the estate that he's got involvement in. But you can see they spray the fence line out to keep it, keep it clear. Okay. Um, otherwise it does just get completely overgrown with no cattle uh, coming on the field regularly mm. To, mm. to bite it off. Yeah, so how long is this in existence, this project? This has been, this is in its sixth, sixth year here now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This. The, 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 the field previously was slightly abandoned by the previous tenant. It's been in like this sort of state for a long time further, but then obviously the wires in that have been the previous last six years. Yeah, a professional fencer come in and, and did all this properly. Mm. Um, and it's running its own separate battery fencer. So that big brashed area there, if you look on a very old map, was known as the brickworks. Um, this large estate, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but the, all the bricks were, a lot of the bricks would have been made here. There's the, this farm, particular farms covered in a lot of marl pits. Right. Do, do clay out to, to make bricks, yeah. The original shed kennels are all built on site from the woods on the estate as well. So all, think, the, yeah, all the timbers are, yeah. Yeah, and then Ben mentioned like all the fields are dra clay drained as well, uh, done yeah. um, back in the war and even previous before that by monks, aren't they? I think. Yeah. The maps have been lost, but the head walls that we found have got 1886 written on them. Okay. And you can see the, the pipes have got thumbprints in them. We've got a pretty good drainage contractor locally that, that, that knows about all this drainage sorcery and where drains go. And mm. we're slowly trying to rediscover them and repair them where they're blowing up in the middle mm. of the fields. Yeah. Yeah. Like and three inch laterals aren't they every five meters across the field and then they lead into like a big six inch to 12 inch. Yeah, they go, they go up to nine inch pipes, but the, the drainage systems are so old, the drain outlets are in pits. So they take some finding because years ago, they would have filled the water with pits to feed the cattle for drinking water. Okay. Because you'd normally find a drain outlet in a ditch. Whereas we had to look for these pits in the winter that have, that have gone orange on wet days where the washings off the drain have made the water go orange and that's okay. how we found this one big system in okay. particular. But yeah. So yeah. did they use that in source or wherever the water ended up? They used that for animals as well? For animals yeah. and then it overflowed into ditch to go away but it, yeah. it's unbelievable what yeah. they dug in by hand. All well, so done the hard way. Initial pits are all bricked in the bottom where because obviously previous farmers and that's just overgrown and got yeah. lost in time. <laughs> yeah, they reckon they bricked the bottom of the pits so the cattle could walk in to drink. And mm. um, yes, I can believe what they did really. So as we're walking to the young stock here, you, you have a wide margin there that you didn't cut? Yes, it's if you walk out again, this was a request of the landlord that for various environmental schemes that he'd like no mowing, no fertilizing, no slurry application to take place on these four meter buffer strips. Yeah. And when we reseeded, we didn't plough those four metre strips to, to keep the old varieties of grass in that create the biodiversity and all, all the rest of it that, that he wanted. It, it doesn't seem to make a great deal of difference with cattle grazing. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, they can still eat the grass that's there, it's just not as tidy as the middle. Yeah. Um, so again, how long are you doing that? that this, this, this particular 400 acre block is under this scheme and it's been going for five or six years now right. and the hedges are on a three year plus cutting cycle to allow them to fruit. 
and then then they'll cut them or maybe they might coppice them or something like that yeah yeah so it doesn't look quite as tidy to the eye but you you, you get used to it and when the hedge cutter does come any oak that's appearing they won't they won't cut the oak in the hedge so to so, so try and increase the number of trees on the farm yeah it's fair to say you can still farm away commercially by doing that yeah yeah, yeah, it's no major hindrance to you. It's no major hindrance. It's it's a concept you have to get used to, but once you're used to it, you just just becomes part of the normal farming operation. It doesn't affect the bit in the middle with farming, so it's a yeah. happy medium meeting in the middle, really. But yeah. it's, so it can remain commercially viable for us and improve the environment. 